Hey guys, it's Kevin on the Outer Banks, North Carolina again. Uh, I thought I would uh, shoot you a quick video on battery specific, uh, the difference in batteries, the um, you know what kind to get, and answer a few questions I've been asked. And uh, you know anybody who's uh, trying to set up a system, they're always uh, you know asking questions like why six volt batteries and things like that. And I'm going to try to answer some of those questions, and I'm also going to try to uh, answer some of the questions of charging characteristics and and how I charge my batteries and maintain them and things like that. So uh, I'm going to start off on this battery over here. This is an 8D battery. This is something you'd see like in a in a big rig or 18 wheeler or, or you know a big boat. And um, you know as beefy as this thing looks, and you would think, man, this would be great. Big old big huge battery would be great for solar. Uh, it's not. It's uh, it's great as a uh, something that sits there fully charged and ready to go and give you lots of power for a long time but as far as cycling which means pulling the battery down you know to a to a deep uh, discharge and then charging it back up it's going to last uh, less than a year if you were to actually operate it and use it in a solar system and uh, let me go in on that when you see a battery that almost has no information on it except for cold cranking amps that's uh that's going to be a total no-no for solar um, as far as you know using it every day but if you're gonna just have a battery backup and something that you're not planning on using unless the power goes out or something like that then it's going to work but as far as uh, using it over and over it's not going to work uh, this battery here this is like your midway point here uh, the batteries that are going to have reserve capacity and stuff like that but as soon as it says high charge uh, capacity that means cold cranking amps that's just another word for it and then you also have your dual purpose batteries and this happens to be a uh, gel cell battery and I'll go into that in just a second um, the difference on these this battery has got a lot of good information on it and it's actually a really good battery the only problem with these batteries is they are very sensitive to overcharging you overcharge one of these things are done that doesn't look like it's focused but um, this one has written right on it how many uh, discharge cycles it's rated for. It's rated for 500 of them. A, uh, if you have a battery that, that has a discharge cycle written on it, uh, it means to 80% discharge. And uh, then the uh, 6 volt batteries had a lot of questions about these. Uh, the reason you see so many 6 volt batteries in uh, solar uh, you know, backup systems is because they are actually truly deep cycle batteries. They have no cold cranking amps. Uh, they're just thick lead. They're meant to be discharged over and over. In other words, you know, all a bunch of fat men around on golf carts for you know 18 holes of golf twice a day, and then they get charged up every night. And that's why they're so popular. I mean, they do have batteries that are purely meant for uh, doing uh, solar uh, power but they are proud of those things and some of them are you know you get what you uh, pay for but if you look at a true deep cycle battery it's only going to have very lim limited information let me go to this one basically all you're going to have on there is uh, amp hours and uh, this is a 225 amp or 226 amp hour battery and when they if it just says 226 amp hours it always means 20 hours and then uh, above that it gives you a little more information uh, this thing go at 75 amps discharge for 135 minutes uh, and that's to full discharge and a uh, a true deep cycle battery uh, like these these are good for anywhere around 900 to 1200 uh, discharges depending on how far you discharge them I only discharge these down to maybe 30 percent um, I've been running off of these ever since the uh, that one grid tie inverter kicked the bucket there I've got half my solar on the other three and then I've got the one inverter there uh, I've been running for basically all summer and that would be the two freezers the lights and uh, and all that upstairs in the for all the way upstairs not in the you know family room and kitchen and stuff like that and uh, usually I only run to maybe 
80 percent uh, state of discharge or I'm sorry 20 percent state of discharge um, and then another little tidbit that you guys might not like to hear and I, I think I've said this in previous videos but I'm trying to uh, stick to uh, being kind of specific here um, another uh, thing that you that people would you would just think naturally if you were to draw 60 amps off your off your battery for an hour that if you put 60 amps back in that you'd be fully charged and that's simply not true um, you have to put 30 percent in more than you used so that hurts because uh, if you took 60 amps out for an hour you gotta put 90 amps in for an hour uh, and that's just simple math and uh, keeping your batteries fully charged is going to be very important so let me close this up and then I'll talk about the other batteries uh, the basic two different kinds of batteries are there's three different kinds of batteries you have a uh, flooded uh, wet cell you have a gel cell and I don't have a battery to put in the picture there but then you also have AGMs which is absorbed glass mat uh, the, the advantages to a gel cell and an absorbed glass mat is they do no venting at all you can put them anywhere you want. You can lay them on their sides. You can put, turn them upside down, um, and you don't have to vent them. These batteries here, you do, um, but it's far cheaper to make a venting system than it is to uh, pay for these suckers, especially if you ruin one of these gel cells. These things are crazy expensive. Uh, the AGMs, they're still tough, but you want to be careful in charging them. Um, I wish I had the information readily available for you. I won't, it's about the same as a regular lead acid battery. Um, I, I bulk charge those, which means uh, I push them up until they're 14.4 volts, and then I float them at 13.5. And uh, for example, this is this has been running. It's been dark for maybe an hour now. Um, that's about average for where it runs. It'll get all the way down to maybe 12.3 overnight. And when the refrigerators or the freezers start up, it'll pull it down to about 11.7. Um, that shouldn't concern you at all. Uh, like I've said before, a battery with absolutely no draw on it is going to, you know, at 100% is going to be 12.6, which means these are uh, these are totally full because right now we're pulling 16.9 amps off of it. So there's a freezer running, and then that stereo you hear in the background's running, but. Um, Anybody who's uh, going to start into a small solar system and wondering what kind of batteries to buy, go for your golf cart batteries. Uh, I personally recommend the uh, the uh, Trojan 135s, C135s. I think it's something like that. It's a fantastic battery, but don't be afraid of uh, different brands of golf cart batteries. Uh, it just depends on if you know somebody. The only reason I don't have the Trojans is because I got a buddy that owns an auto parts store and he gave me all those, or he sold me all those batteries at cost. And um, it's just a way to go. Uh, if you want to go the crazy high tech route, you can always go for your true solar batteries, which is going to be your roll Surrettes. And uh, you just have to go on some of the solar websites. And those things are insane expensive, but uh, they'll last a really long time. Um, but one of the biggest things I, I can't push it hard enough is uh, you need to uh, make sure that you charge these things from time to time uh, all the way up all the way up to the top I mean and uh, equalizing them is important uh, equalizing is something I do once a month and it actually takes it almost to 16 volts for an hour which sounds nuts but what's it, what it does it stirs the electrolytes and uh, is also going to extend the uh, life of your batteries. Uh, I wish I could explain all this stuff in a nutshell, but I, I just uh, I don't know how to do it. But anybody who's setting up any system, whether it's Harbor Freight, anything like that, um, if you see a battery at Walmart and it says Deep Cycle, it's a dual purpose battery. And the reason, and the, the way you're going to be able to tell that is it's going to have uh, cranking amps on it, or it's going to have uh, high discharge capacity things like that golf cart batteries don't have any of that stuff and they can be had fairly cheaply and uh, it's just it's the way to go so uh, ask me some questions I'll try to answer them uh, I apologize for anybody who's been commenting and questioning on the last videos for some reason it doesn't tell me when people are uh, are uh, asking questions on older videos uh, and I, I try to go through those every now and then but uh, 
I'll do my best. I, I hope this was helpful, and uh, we'll see you next time.